Hi guys, welcome to Tea Time Friday. It is so good to have you here. I'm super, super, super excited to be with you. Oh my gosh, guys. Our Tea Time Friday live event is next week. Have you signed up? I mean, it would be so sad for you to miss out and then you start saying, oh my God, I wish I was there. Why would you wait for that to happen? Why would you wait for that to happen? Please don't wait for that to happen. Art Time Friday Live event is happening next week on 14th June 2024 at from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Registration is 15k. Like that's the ticket. I don't think you want to miss. Come and we encounter God more. I don't I don't mean that you've never encountered him, but I'm saying like we'll have several encounters with him. We'll be in his presence. I know he's going to be with us. So you don't want to miss out on that. We're going to have beautiful worship moments from Bunjoville. We're going to have a theme expositor who'll be my mother, Sarah Bunjo. Woo -woo -woo -woo. And my father, John Bunjo, you'll finally get to see him. All of you who didn't, they've been commenting on my on my DTM Friday like nothing. All of those, they're going to be there. My dad will be there, one of the panelists. My mom will be the theme expositor. We're talking about the heart. Ezekiel 36 and Psalms 51. How I'm not going to expound on that. If you want to know, you come. I tell you, our hearts are very important as Christians. It's one of the fundamental things with our relationship with God. So if you want to know, you come. Our theme expositor is going to do a great job at doing that. So you better not miss out. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's pray. Oh, Father, thank you so much for this wonderful evening. Thank you for this time that you've given us to be together, to share conversations and to fellowship together. Father, through your word, and I pray that you give us revelations through your word. May we draw closer to you through your word. May our eyes be opened through your word, Father. May our hearts be transformed through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So today I want us to talk about, we are still on the topic of David and Goliath. Uh-huh. So we're going to continue from, well, we stopped, last week we stopped on verse 26. Um, so Samuel 17, 26 is where we stopped. Last time we talked about perspective, how uh, David's perspective when it came to Goliath and how it was different from all of those around him. Okay. So now we go to 27. They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. David was asking, what is the price for the person who kills Goliath? Eh? Mm -hmm. Then when Eliab, Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom do you leave those sheep, those few sheep in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. First of all, this is so uncalled for. This is quite mean. He was being very, very mean to David. But that's not the point of today. <laughs> if there's a point there. Now what have now what have I done? You can just imagine him like imagine a little brother like now what have I done? Hmm? Now what have I done? said David. I can't can I can I can't I even speak when I he turned them away. He then turned... You get what's wrong with me, Anneli? Let me read again. Now what have I done, said David. Can't I even speak? He turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. And the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul. So Saul said for him. David said, so, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. You guys keep in mind, David was a shepherd. He wasn't even fighting in wars like that. He was a shepherd. And then, I'm just thinking about audacity. Let no one lose heart. He's even confident. He's like, ah, oh, don't lose heart, man. Me, I will go on account of the I will go. I will go and fight him. Yes, Google Goliath. I'll tell you that for free. So he replied, you're not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. Eh? And he has been a warrior from his youth. Then David says, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. Guys, underline this 34. Your servant has been keeping your father's sheep. 
when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I... Oh, I just read that. Your servant has killed both lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine hmm, will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Guys. Guys. So, I was reading this and then you know what came to my mind? Training ground. I thought about how all of us have big dreams and big ambitions and places where we need to be that probably are places that we want to be that are not exactly where we are right now. Let's say right now I'd want to be in a hospital. I'd want to be a certain type of artist doing certain things. But I'm not yet doing those things. And now I'm thinking about David, how when he was standing to the flock, that was his training ground. When he encountered lions and bears, that was his training ground. And I just think of how if David did not exhaust the time he had there with the flock and sheep, he wouldn't reflect on this day of battle with Goliath. And I was like, oh my God, I just had like a question in my head, the Holy Spirit, I definitely believe it's the Holy Spirit. Like, Sarah, how have you been using your training ground? Hmm? Are, you, are, you, are you skilling? Because David, he got the skills on how to kill a lion and the bear. God revealed, helped him fight those people. I'm sure he had techniques that he used to fight those bears and the lions and God gave him victory all that, on all occasions. And I'm wondering, if it's around. I'm here complaining about, I'm not complaining anymore, that's the truth, but whoever who is there, you're complaining, man, it's not the job I want, this is not where I should be, it's not the house I should be in, this is not the career I should be taking, ask God, is this, this could be your training ground, training you for a big, big, big opportunity, let's say you are a minister of God, and then you're like, ah, man, the church, because I know sometimes we minister of God, we like the number of people, or like maybe the location of the church, people are not coming, we're not active enough, the worship team isn't there yet, all of those things, oh my God, that is literally training ground, and now when I was telling you that, I remembered, uh, we used to have lunch hour services, my parents, with my parents at Bukisa Plaza, so, we would have um the communication was kind of different and even online that lunch hour and online it really taught us as Bunjo people never to look at the crowd never to look at how many people are watching because online you don't know like some people you can three see three people two people one person so almost it's like you're singing for yourself but that gave us change our perspective in terms of um, what the whole point of worship is and also it trained us in that now even if they call us to maybe somewhere and people are like for, we will do it with all the whole of our hearts because we know that at the end of the day it's not about the people God could have brought these people and they're the ones who need the change they're the ones who need to hear what we have brought from God like the message that we are delivering through music not even only that right now as I wait for internship the, the skills that I've added on especially in my music uh my music era like uh, my music let me call it my music world <laughs> my world of music and the sphere of music the skills that i've gained right now the self-discovery i've had this has been a training ground even in my marriage it has been a training ground sometimes you can be like oh my god god why i'm a child of god i don't deserve to be in a over like a poor thingy i don't deserve to be in a less thingy like this is not my portion but you guys most times it's even training ground because David was with sheep, my friend. He wasn't fighting men, he was fighting bears and lions. He was with sheep. And then when that day when it's training, he needed to reflect, he was ready. You guys are like, Fisera, I'm ready when that day comes for me to reflect all the training God has been taking me through. All that my training ground, have I exhausted my training ground well and with confidence and with joy and happiness and perseverance? Have I? Mm -hmm. Well, I've exhausted that training point. <laughs> so, um, then Saul told him, So Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord may the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fasted on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. Then he said, David said, I can't go in these. I can just imagine him saying, I can't go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off, 
Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of the shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached a Philistine. Guys, remember when I said about skilling? David knew how he used to fight the he had a technique on how to fight the bears. In his training ground, he got on during other training ground like in the on the floor, okay? He learned how to use the sling, he learned how to use those tools, the small tools that he has to defeat those big, big beasts and what. So and so gave him these things. They, he couldn't they are going to just they were going to just weigh him down. And then I was like, okay, so Fisera, you know your training ground can reach and the skills that you are supposed to acquire in your training ground, it's time for them to manifest and time for them to for you to use them in that opportunity God has given you. But you can't because you did not exhaust your training ground well. And then yeah, if obviously if they give you or let's say now you say when David was dressed with those garments, he could he would have failed if he was like, Okay, so I'm gonna go with this, thank you. He would have failed. He doesn't know how to use a sword. He those things are too way too heavy for him. Basically, it wasn't even part my, my point is eh? exhaust your training ground exhaust the skills make sure that you explore all the skills and i'm not saying it doesn't have to be a career thing it can be a character thing like it's a training ground now god is training your character when you become a pastor when you become a leader you can approach better situations better because of the training god has put you through and you see like at the time david uh, an opportunity presented itself for him to be that king's son-in-law for his family to be exempted from taxes like he grabbed it by the hand because he was so confident he's like surely in my training ground god defeated bears you know bears and lions so why can i think that this guy is any different from them moreover he got stones i'm sure the ones were around him were like what so that for me that stone signified like skill skill let's say it's a career thing or if it's a character thing don't ignore that lesson don't ignore don't despise your situation right now the nature of it and i said i'm doing yourself there i don't know but first consult but i'd be like god is this you what do you want is this where i'm supposed to be right now and if it is help me learn from this situation that should be a prayer because i've I, like i've given you that example of the live stream and online church like we learned to never to put our eyes on like people like all people are raising their hands all people are sitting when we are singing it's okay we are going to deliver our message and in fact even one time did jakes mentioned how we have to be always ready um i will not get into that because <laughs> the time friday the time is over but guys guys eh? i'm not even taking tea do not despise your training ground do not despise the training ground ask god for strength Ask God for wisdom and how you can overcome those things in your training ground. If it's a, if you are creative, you skill. Hmm? You could despise because you're in a certain church. And you're like ah, ah here I won't give my best, and people don't appreciate. Give your best in every situation you're in. Or by volunteering, or you're not being paid, give your best. Go all out. Go all out because God sees that and God appreciates that. And a time will come when the practice that you are making all the things that you are doing in that time where no one was seeing it's time for them to manifest and it's time for the world to see it's time for god to show his glory through you but if you're not ready you miss it and it will be so sad guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to attend the time friday next week there will be more and more of the hearty conversations. We'll be drinking tea. I don't know if you can bring a cup of tea you bring, but if you can't, no pressure. I know you can't be moving around with cups from work. I love you so much. May God bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you. Father, for whoever has this word, whoever it belongs to, whoever it's, whoever it's supposed to hear this, may this word be seated. May it be planted in their heart on infertile ground. There shall not be weeds that will choke it out. It shall not be, it will not be a stony ground, Father, but we thank you because that word is going to grow and yield in their hearts. In the name of Jesus, even me, Father, help me use, exhaust my training ground. And there could be multiple training grounds, it's not only one, they are continuous. So, all right, thank you, Jesus. Bless you. Cool. Bye bye.